וכן במרומים. Today we mark that day as proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly as the International Day of Commemoration in memory of the victims of the Holocaust for the 1,500 people gathered here in the UNESCO General Assembly Hall in Paris and with over 355 organizations screening the film Who Will Write Our History in over 55 countries. The film we are about to see depicts the lives of the remarkable historians who worked in the Warsaw Ghetto in an organized effort to tell their own story. This clandestine group of the Warsaw Ghetto wanted to defeat the Nazi infernal project with pen and paper. They risked everything so that their archives would survive the war, even if they did not, and so that the truth could be told, their name and their life not forgotten. Does the world know about our suffering? Emanuel Ringelblum understood that he had a story to tell, and it was the most important story he would ever have to tell. We have the great honor of screening our film, Who Will Write Our History, today. It's actually screening behind us right now, and we're very, very thrilled to be here. Almost all the photography that we have was taken by the German propaganda unit. Will the Germans write our history, or will we write our history? We are live through Facebook, and for the next 40 minutes or so, we're going to be bringing you some extra content, talking to you about the Onyx Shabbos, uh, and also answering your questions. Plus, we're going to show you some clips that are not in the film. This clip that you're about to see is an outtake from the film that has never been seen before. As I stood by the open door and I watched the wild scene before me, a blonde girl, as pretty as a blossom, came running over to me and asked me in great haste, what are they going to do with us? I was not taught about the Holocaust, and I think it was one of the first times when Schindler's List came out that people wanted to hear the stories. The most important work of my life has been to listen to these voices and make it possible for others to listen. There are questions coming in, and the question is that the archive seems to be incredibly important, and why has it been so little known until today? It was behind the Iron Curtain, and um, it was hard to access. Peter Fiegel, as a child, kept his own hidden diary. He survived the Holocaust and today is a volunteer at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, and he's joining us now to share his experiences. A good afternoon from Washington, D.C. Thank you for including me and the museum in this important event at UNESCO. The Emanuel Ringel Bloom Jewish Historical Institute is the second of our three locations that we're going to this evening. We uh, are here in this very building where the Onyx Shabbat group used to meet and where the original archive is stored right now. I'd like to thank Dr. Lieber Geft at the uh, Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles for joining us and for gathering together um, a group of people in Los Angeles. Here in Paris, we got together and in fact, we remembered together. <laughs> Oh, 